You know, you probably knew John better than anybody up there at the U of A because your offices were next to each other and you spent a lot of time together. What, what do you remember about it? Well, I'll tell you what, John, I, when I came to Arkansas in 1985, uh, I had the opportunity to run into John. I'd heard so much about him even at that period of time. You know, I, 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 I went to school at the University of Texas at El Paso, which was Texas Western. And back in the old days of Texas Western, they had a track program that was unbelievable. And uh, as I noticed, John's program at the University of Arkansas had caught on and took off like wildfire. And there were so many times that to speak with John about how he did what he did uh, it was incredible. I mean, he, was, he became a coach that I wanted to be around morning, noon, and night so his championships could rub off on me. And it, it, and it wasn't about X's and O's that we talked about. We talked about people and, and what makes them tick. I, I never will forget a question that I first asked him. I said, why is it that I see you with more field events, more long distance runners, instead of the, the, what I used to, I ran track in college. I said, you know, everybody was after the sprinter, nine, anyone could break nine, five was a great sprinter and everything. He says, well, coach, I tell you what, the sprinters remind me of guys that are, are, are prima donnas. They're always injured. They're always hurt. They're always in the whirlpool. Uh, he says, distant runners, they don't never get hurt. <laughs> I said, that makes sense. I mean, if, you get, if you're getting all your points from your distant people or your pole vaulter or your, your long jumper and all that, he, he had the game figured out way before all these other coaches have come along and figured it out. He, that's why I always said that he, he could have coached any sport, Mike, any sport, and won a national championship and won several national championships because of who he was. You know, that fits in with something that he said to me one day because I used to go over when in the summer when it was dead and nobody was busy because I just wanted to listen to him. Because I was like you, I want what, what makes this guy tick? And I asked him one time, I said, do you have other coaches from other sports come in here and ask you? You're sick? He said, just one. He's right down the hallway. He's, he asked me. I said, no, nobody else. You know, and I thought, if I'm coaching tiddlywinks at the U of A, I'm talking to this You're guy. You're talking to him. Uh, John taught me so much in the years that I was, had the opportunity to be around him. Uh, you know, I, I said that yesterday to John. I said, you know, you, your crown in heaven has got to be so, so full of, it won't be how many track meets you were at and how many track championships you won and how many national championships. You won because you've done you did all of that. But the good man I know would probably ask you, how many lives have you touched? And and I guarantee you, there is no one alive has touched as many lives as you have. And so when you go to rest, your crown is gonna be so heavy that it'll be something that no other human being would to me in my eyes will ever be a John McDonald, yeah. you know, he just, he just had so much, you know, uh, he was telling me how he used to run with his players. He could outrun them, you know, he could outdistance them. Uh, and, and, and I remember during the times that I was in the coaching business, I spent time on the floor, moving, running and touching. Some days I would be so tired of practice and I only would go an hour and 45 to two hours at the limit. He did that with his track guys. I, I, he, you know, he got them up early in the morning because I start getting our guys up early in the mornings at five and six o'clock in the morning and get, you know, he, he was, in, he, he talked me into buying this, this, this farm out here, the ranch. I, I almost, I was buying a piece of land from him. I just wanted a place to just get away and be, be me. And uh, Mike Conley, who was one for John, uh, John told me about Mike having real estates, and that's that's how I got to come out here and build me a little place just to get away. And he talked about those things, about how you can get to yourself and become a better, better coach. 
He was also able to do what you've been able to do, which when he retired, I remember he said, I've done enough, now it's time to have time with my family. And you've been able to do that, to be with Rose and, and not have those demands anymore. So what's, how hard is that to give that up? But on the other hand, what's the reward for having a life after coaching? Well, it's so important to have a life after coaching. Uh, no one loved the game any more than I did because I played it ever since I was nine years old. Uh, uh, got to playing organized when I got into my teenage years. But to be able to spend the last 15, 20 years not having to worry about whether you won or lost a game, uh, I, I, I'm, I love animals. Um, Rose loved animals. And so we got more involved with taking care of, uh, in other words, we re rescued some horses and stuff. Uh, it has, you know, I, I missed the coaching from the first part, but I didn't miss the games as much as I thought I would. I miss working them out. I miss practice. I'm, my, my, to me, my, the gymnasium was a classroom for me to try to influence youngsters to play a type of game that nobody else knew how to play, want to play, and didn't know it, what it was all about, but I knew. And so uh, I missed those days. I, I certainly did. As time went on, it, was a, it becomes easier to, to adjust. Uh, your health starts falling. Your, your Rose's health begin to go. And, and it's, at least I'm home. And, and being able to, to watch and take care of her is, is very important to me. Do you think John developed into that? Did, did he settle in with his family out on his place over in Oklahoma? Did you sense that? Oh, John had, John had over a thousand cows that he, he could work. He was an amazing man. That's why I said, you know, no one really knew John. John had, uh, you know, he had that instincts of, of, of being maybe part cowboy, part Razorback, I mean, you name it, he could be it very easily. Without trying, he could be anything he wanted to be. And we saw him, and I saw him, as one of the greatest of all times. And I don't see anyone in the near future who ever come close to doing what he's done at the University of Arkansas.